Good morning and welcome to Rose Red Homestead where today we are going to attempt to be successful with my recipe of sourdough bread in the bread machine. First of all, will you check out these really cute dishes? I mean, are these just not the cutest things ever? Jem and I went shopping at Costco yesterday. We were in separate cars and so we arrived at different times and I was first. <laughs> so I just, I just pushed my basket up and down the aisles and found a whole lot of treasures that I didn't think we could live without. This little set was only $20. And um, when I came home, and, and it's melamine, and I thought these will be great to show on our YouTube videos and also to use in our trailer when we go um, camping. And um, so I thought, well, I hope I can get these in our Amazon store, but we can't because they're not found on Amazon. Amazon has others, but they were twice the price of these. This was only $20. So if you want something fun for spring and summer and you have an access to a Costco, check these out. I just think they're as cute as can be. So enough said about these, I'm gonna put them away. Now on with the show for sourdough bread and I'm hoping hoping that this is going to work so here is the start that I'm going to use now um, this is this is my start I started it from scratch I've had it now probably about three months because I notoriously forget them and forget to feed them and they die but I'm teaching a sourdough class in just a couple of days and so my refrigerator is now filled with jars that look just exactly like this but this is my sourdough, and I um, my, this is my sourdough starter, and I um, got it out of the fridge yesterday morning, fed it, let it sit out on the counter all day long, and then right before I went to bed last night, I fed it again, and so it has been out on the counter all night long, and it is ripe and ready, as you can see. Now, <clears throat> just a word about sourdough. The degree of tanginess in your sourdough is is partly due to the tanginess of your start. And if you want a tangier, and I don't, I like quite a plain, mild flavor. I just pretty much use this for leaven in place of yeast. I don't care about a deep tangy taste, but I know many of you do. And so I just feed mine with um, all-purpose flour, but you can add wheat flour or rye flour to uh, bump up that taste a little bit. Or if your start produces what is called hooch, which is that liquid, that liquid has more acetic acid in it, and that is what gives the tangy flavor. I pour mine off, but if you like a tangy flavor, stir that in. And then um, the second thing that improves the tang or deepens the tang is a longer ferment. If you use a lot of start, in a batch of bread, that means it's going to rise faster because there's more organisms in there that are producing the gas. And so a faster rise does not give as much time uh, for fermentation. And so if you want a tangier uh, taste to your bread, use a little bit less starch, but expect a longer rise time. It is during that rise time that the flavor develops, that fermentation occurs. I think it can be quite difficult to do sourdough in a mechanical device like a bread machine because um, sourdough takes the eye of the baker in order to monitor the progress of the dough as it goes forward. I think it is very okay to do, to mix the, the dough and to let it come to its first rise in bread machine, which is what we're going to experiment with today. I have a special way how I, I don't do my sourdough bread in a stand mixer. I do it by hand. I get my hands in the dough because I need to feel it. So I'm giving that up today and I'm going to let the machine do the mixing. So we're going to try to see now that, that I'm doing it on the dough cycle, not on the artisan cycle. I won't ever use that artisan cycle again uh, because it goes through a knead and then a rise uh, time three different times and takes five hours. I'm uh, No. Uh, where I want the time spent is in the fermentation of the dough during the proofing. And so that's what we're going to do today. So here is my bread pan. 
and um, I'm adding the liquids first. And so I'm putting one and one third cups of water. And then the next thing I'm going to add is the start. Now, when you measure start, this oh, smells fantastic. Um, you uh, take the air out of it. So I'm going to do that, knock it down. And then um, my recipe calls for two thirds of a cup. And with sourdough start, it's okay if it is not exact. If I get a little bit too much, then that's just going to be fine. And I don't need to save any of this for feeding because I have about, I have, I think about 15 people coming to my class. So I have eight jars in there that they're going to split and take home a start. So I have plenty of start. I don't need to feed this. So I'm just taking my two thirds of a cup. And then I'm going to put in two and a half teaspoons of salt and just a splash of olive oil, just a little bit. And that is it. This is a very, Noel, except for the flour, so that's not quite it. Um, this is a very simple recipe, doesn't have a lot of fancy extras in it. Then what I need to put in is 500 grams of flour. And we've got it. So this now goes in the bread machine. Locked in place. Turn it on and we're going to the dough setting, which is number eight. So it's going to take an hour and 30 minutes, and we're going to go ahead and start. So as you are already familiar with, this is what mine looks like when the mixing starts. So we'll bring you back again um, once it is in the kneading, um, after the mixing, when it's in the kneading segment to see if it looks better than last time. So we'll see you shortly. So take a look at this, it is kneading such a difference in this dough compared to the dough that was in the um, Cuisinart booklet, a much softer dough. So I think that we're going to be okay. The other one at this point had big cracks and was all dry. So I think we're going to be good. The dough cycle just finished on the bread machine, so let's get our dough out and see. It just finished its second rise, so it didn't rise very much. That is... Um, that is par for the course for sourdough, so you can see it didn't rise very much. Um, when you don't use yeast, like this recipe does not call for yeast, I don't like to use yeast in my sourdough bread, um, then it is going to take a longer time for the bread to rise or to proof. So let's just take a look and see how it's doing. So the dough is very soft. Get some that's stuck to the paddle here. We got most of the rest. So I'm going to, yes, it is, um, it has started to rise and that's just great. Okay. So I'm going to bring all the sides in toward the center, going all the way around. I'm deflating as I go. That start was very ripe, so we should have a lot of good action. Although, with just the starter, it's going to take 
time. It might take four or five hours. I just don't know. You never know. All right, I think I've got most of it. All right, now I'm going to flop it over. Brush most of the flour out of the way. And now I'm going to shape it. So to shape this, I'm going to be letting it do its final proofing in this basket. And I want a nice taut skin over the top of this ball. And so I'm going to just cut my hands and pull it toward me and it's stretching the dough over the top because the bottom side is sticking to the countertop. All right, now in we go. Now there is a little break in the skin right here, so I don't quite know what happened there. But the good news is this surface is going to be the bottom side of the ultimate loaf of bread. So um, I'll show you that part when we get there for right now. So I'm gonna cover it with a plastic bag and we're just going to let it sit out here. It's kind of loose, the bag is loose. We're gonna let it sit out here for as long as it takes for it to be completely proofed and ready for the oven. As it proofs, when it gets close, when it gets to be about 45 minutes before it will be time to bake, and if you're doing it for the first time, you may not be able to tell that, but you will with time and experience. But I will put this in the oven at 465. This is a four quart Dutch oven. It's very seasoned. And so it doesn't need any oil or grease or anything. And then we'll put that, this will be preheating for at least 45 minutes before we put the bread in. And then what happens here is with this Dutch oven, it holds the moisture in, it steams that bread to where we get a really lovely crust on it. So we will be back when everything is proofed and ready to go into the oven. And meanwhile, this will be preheating and it will be ready. So we'll see you then. I brought you back to show you when proofing is not done. I'm preheating the oven, it's been going for about 15 minutes, and I just checked our bread and I thought you might like to see it, but also I wanted to show you the way that I check to see if it's proofed is that I just push it in about up to here, half way up to my knuckle. If it pops back fairly quickly, it is not done. If it moves back really slowly, then it's done and ready, so here we go. So do you see how quickly that popped right back? That is not done. So it still is proofing, needs more fermenting. So hopefully it will be done within about a half an hour or so because that's about when the oven will be ready. So see you when we're ready to go in the oven and I'll show you uh, what it looks like when the proofing is finished. All right, I think we are ready to go, so let's check. It's much bigger and when we poke it in, it comes back slowly. So this is how, this is what is going to happen next. We are going to open up the oven. Then I'm going to put on one of these gloves and lift the lid off of the Dutch oven. Then I'm going to flour my hands in the top of this and I'm going to turn the basket upside down in my hand. And um, if you are wanting to slash the top, you won't, you'll have to turn it back up on your hand and slash. I don't slash because that underneath part is where I brought everything together. And so it's now going to be on the top and it's going to open up just like a flower. And I love it that way. So we're going to move over here. Okay, so here we are. And I'm moving very quickly because we don't want to lose too much. All right, and then I'm just gonna dump this in my hand, and then I am going to fold it almost in half while I put it in here, because I don't want to burn my hands. And then pop that lid right back on. And we're good probably for another 20 minutes. At the end of 20 minutes, I'm going to lift that lid. It will be white, 
not browned at all, and we'll give it another 10, 12 minutes for it to brown, and then it should be done. So we will see you then. I'm gonna go get the bread, I can't wait. I'll be right back. Putting on my heat gloves. Oh my gosh. Look, gorgeous, gorgeous. Oh, we might. What Jim is referring to is a lot of times when I get this type of bread out of the oven, it snaps a lot. But you can see because of, um, now I did not slash it as I explained, um, it just opens like a flower. Sometimes it's a little bit more dramatic than this, but this is still really good. But here's this crust because it baked inside that Dutch oven. And so it's going to have a lovely crust. We're going to let it cool for just a few minutes. I do just want to explain that um, one of the things that the original Cuisinart recipe did was that it combined a whole lot of um, starter, two cups of starter with two teaspoons of yeast. And I know that they, I figured that they did that so that they could have a more standardized timing on the cycling that they did in the machine. Um, and so if the, the sourdough starter that always has a variable time was slow or whatever, that yeast would pick up. And two, table, two teaspoons of yeast is a lot for this amount of flour. So that is why I prefer to use no yeast in my sourdough bread. My preference is actually not to do it in the machine. I wanted to see if it would work, and obviously it does. But when I do it, um, it generally takes about, I mix it by hand, and then I fold it for the first hour um, after it's been mixed, and then um, it takes a total of four hours, counting that first hour when I'm folding, for it to go through the first rise to double in, in size. And then I shape it into this bowl, and, um, and it takes usually another between three and four hours to rise. This one took about four hours to rise before it was ready to go into the oven. And so that would be a total of eight hours of fermentation time. With the bread machine, we got um, it mixed, and then it had a quick little rise, and then it kneaded, and then it had another rise. And so we had maybe four or five hours of fermentation time. And so the compensation on that was that they just doped it up with a whole lot of, um, of the um, starter, uh, hope, hoping to increase the taste. But I like the taste to grow over time. So that is the difference. This has been a good experiment for me, uh, but it did inform me that I won't be using the bread machine for my sourdough bread. But we're gonna let this cool and we'll come back when we can uh, cut it, take a look at the uh, crumb and have a little taste. All right, let's check it out. Lovely crust, oh my goodness. Oh, look at that, look at that. If that isn't just gorgeous. That looks fantastic. Oh, I know. Oh my gosh, honey. You need to taste this and see what you think. All right, take a little taste. Wonderful. I'm having a hard time chewing. I have two major dental appointments next week I'm not looking forward to, so I'm having to be careful. But the smell is phenomenal. The taste is exquisite. So this is a lovely, lovely loaf of sourdough bread. I would have to say that the bread machine did an okay job. I, it did a good job with this recipe that did not have any yeast in it, only the sourdough leaven. So... I think we've had a great success, and I'm feeling very relieved, but I'm not going to do it in the bread machine anymore. I'm going to do it the way I always do it. So thanks for being with us, and we will see you very soon for another video.